What's up guys, it's Chuck from Brady Adventures and today I'm gonna walk you through how we chose our roof rack setup. The main thing I wanna tell you up front is I had a hard time picking a roof rack. I really, really like the Gamviti racks or Gamaviti, however you say it. I really, really like the new Descent off-road racks for the Land Cruiser. Both those racks just look super, super cool. They're super strong. They've got great reputations. But ultimately, I chose the front runner rack. I chose it for a few reasons. I want to tell you right up front, quite a bit lighter than the steel racks. It had um, special mounting brackets specifically for the awning we were looking at. And I really, really liked the T-slot design that was going to allow me to attach a lot of different accessories and even create some of my own. So I'm going to go and ramble on about a little bit of that in the next few minutes. I have to mention OK Four Wheel Drive. While I was looking at the different racks, I called OK Four Wheel Drive. They hooked me up with a sales guy named Chuck, same name as me, and it just so happened he had a 100 series Land Cruiser with a front runner rack and with the Alu Cab awning that we were also looking at. He was extremely helpful. He even went outside in the middle of a snowstorm to measure from the ground to the top of the rack and the top of the awning. Um, he gave me a lot of helpful hints on installation and everything like that and helped me with several challenges that I had through this process. So I highly recommend OK Four Wheel Drive and if you have a 100 Series Land Cruiser and are looking at a rack or any other accessories for the vehicle, see if you can't get Chuck and let him know that Chuck from Brady Adventure sent you. There are a bunch of things you're going to consider when you're looking at a roof rack, including the price, of course, weight of the rack itself, the capacity it can carry, how easily it is to mount things, how cool is it? Right, there's some really, really cool looking racks out there and there's some uh, that maybe aren't as cool. And then is there anything unique about the rack in particular that is a selling point for it? And last but not least, the reputation of the company. So some of these companies are smaller, you know, do they have a, a good following and people who would recommend their product uh, that are knowledgeable and using it the way that you would use it? I've spent the last few days wrapped around the axle trying to produce this video talking about the weight of the rack and the capacity. Aluminum racks are gonna be 40 to 50 pounds lighter than your steel racks. Your steel racks can really ultimately hold more weight. All of this is going to be dependent on how much you really feel comfortable putting on the roof based on your driving style and also based on what the roof can hold. And I decided that that really justifies a whole nother video. But I will tell you right now that um, the weight on the roof was a big deal to me. We wanted to keep that load on the roof as light as possible and not have to worry about being overloaded on top. Another thing that you're going to want to consider is the ease of mounting to the vehicle. You want to make sure whatever rack you get is designed specifically for your vehicle so it's going to be mounted securely um, not gonna leak and you're not gonna have to worry about drilling or doing anything crazy. Another item to consider is the ease of mounting things and the versatility of securing cargo. Most of the steel racks come with pretty standard diameter tube steel and there's lots of options for mounting stuff to that. Usually um, that's gonna you're, you're gonna be able to cover down on the things you want to do. You can run ratchet straps and things like that. Now the advantage of some of the aluminum racks that have the T-slotting in them like the front runner is that you can actually buy like specialty mounts just for what you want. So you could probably configure a rack to mount everything that you want exactly and have it be real easy to get on and off without having to use a bunch of straps and things. So when we were looking at that, we really thought a lot about how quickly we could get things on and off the roof and how secure they were gonna be when they were on top. Also, one of the things that I just briefly considered and you may want to too is the actual height of the rack. I was hoping I would still be able to get the cruiser into my garage even with the rack on there. While we were looking at roof racks, we were also looking at awnings and we zeroed in on the Alucab Shadow On awning. Now you're going to see all kinds of videos on that coming up and we'll explain exactly why we picked that one. Uh, it is significantly more expensive than other awnings, but there are some good reasons we got it. So that really steered us away from a lot of the other roof racks that we were leaning towards to the front runner. There are mounting brackets specifically made for the Shadow On awning that mount to the front runner roof rack. I, I didn't want to have to fabricate my own mounts. I wanted something that was going to be easy to get on and get off when I wasn't using it. Ultimately, choosing a roof rack is a complicated and personal decision. Take your time, think about how you're going to use the rack, how much weight you're going to put on it, and ultimately what you want to get out of it. 
and that's gonna steer you in a direction of the rack that's gonna work right for you. If you have any questions on any of these factors that we considered, please leave us a comment and we'll be happy to let you know what we think. And in the upcoming weeks, you're gonna see our unboxing, our installation, and then I'll show you some final usage of the roof rack and how we're attaching things. Following all that, you're gonna see videos on the awning install and use of the awning and how all this stuff is an integrated system that works for us when we're out on the road. Thanks a lot for watching. If you like this video, please give us the thumbs up and consider subscribing to our channel. And always feel free to leave us any comments or questions that you might have.